second game. I would urge you can be uh, pretty repetitive and grindy, and I didn't like a few of them. They actually do kind of make it worthwhile to do because there is its own finale, its own little like actual drama scenes and stuff in the game based off of it. So I would say definitely check them out if you haven't, or maybe beat the game first, then maybe go back and do them because you can do them later, I believe, I think. So, enjoy. I'm glad to hear you're enjoying the game as much as I did last year. All right, without further ado, let's boot her up. Let's get started. And uh, people are already asking me questions, so let me get into the game, and we'll get, get started, and then you guys can start asking me stuff. I'll answer. Well, I consider doing Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer with viewers and fan of Lovecraft. It's not a no. It's an unsure right now, because I don't know how, how well I'm going to like the game. I don't know how well the viewers are going to like the game. I don't know, even know how the matchmaking and all that, like the lobby system will work. Is there a way to set up lobbies that are safe with trusted people? I don't know. I don't want to answer that yet. Let me put it this way. It's not a 100% no. It's if I like the game enough and I want to play it with people, maybe we would form a party and go online, right? And take on the public. I don't know. But I also don't want to commit to it when I really don't know about the game yet because I don't have it, you see? So, okay. It's our next to last week in Bassmaster. Where do we want to go? I'm trying to think, like, what, is, what are the fish? Or what are the, the, the places where we haven't really done so well? St. John's River is still only 8%, which is crazy to think about. Um, does anyone remember the lake um, that we were in when I caught that monstrous, like, 50-some pound fish? Does anyone have a recollection of what that lake was? Because I don't. I can't remember which one it was. But maybe we want to go back there and see if we can catch those fish again. Right? The game's really Popple loud. Cock. All right, let me lower it some more. Popple cock. This game has really loud menu music. Popple cock. I just lowered it for you guys. Um, was Yo, it Chickamauga? Chickamauga. This is great. It says Land of the Giants for Largemouth Bass. It's rated the second best bass fishing lake in the U.S. by Bassmaster Magazine. Yeah, look, it continues to produce record-breaking bass for top competitive fishing organizations. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go to Chickamauga. This sounds good. Good recommendation. I'm by! Okay. I'm by! So now the volume is really, really low. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm by! I'm by! I'll lower it a lot because I know this game has loud uh, menu music. All right, here we go. Derek is thanking me for playing this for a while. He says he really loved uh, Sunday Night Bites, and he understands why it has to go away. And yeah, and the thing is, again, don't fret. It's not that I'm never going to do a game like this again. Um... Nor is this even necessarily goodbye to Bassmaster. I might eventually. If it goes on a big discount, maybe I'll buy it. Um, and bring it back later on in the year. Maybe bring it back in December. Um, if there's a sequel, maybe I'll play the sequel. Right? So it's not a goodbye. It's just kind of a definitely, you know, ending the fishing for now. Because I need the time for all the other, the other big games. But, you know, may come back. Okay? Yes, the game is 40 bucks if you want to buy it outright. It's pretty ridiculously expensive for what it is. Darth Goldbox, I've been playing Visage like you recommended. Like I'm loving asshole. it. I'm glad to hear that. Door. It's weird because all three major plot lines, well, actually, there's four, but the first three major plot lines you have to do in the game are all completely different. They feel like you're playing three different horror games. And then, man, does it get crazy after that. Look at my fish radar. I'm trying to find some big ones. Overpower Boon says This game, Flight Simulator, Minecraft, Skyrim, and others are staple chill stream games. I, I agree. You know, remember, the next year, we've already talked about this. Since this year I played Skyrim, Too likely bad. next year I'm going to do a Fallout playthrough. But the real question is, what will it be? Will it be Fallout 3 and all of its DLCs? Or will it be Fallout 4 and its DLCs? I'm actually not sure. I gotta think about it, and it'll be up to you guys, obviously, to have input on that as well. Keep in mind... Fallout 3, I've never done direct capture. The two playthroughs I did of Fallout 3 were camera, and it was before interactivity, and it was before all the modern stuff that I do. The Fallout 4 playthrough I did also did not have face cam, um, but it was more modernized with streaming and everything. So, I don't know. Then again, I've only played Fallout 4 once. I actually heard both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 run absolutely beautifully on the Xbox Series X. People who played them are like, yeah, they're like super duper good, like way better than, you know, you wouldn't play before. They're going to be beautiful playthroughs, so. I think we should cast here and see what we get. We're going to do our first cast of the night. And, uh, 
We had a lot. Is this the one? Black Sledgehammer Black Blue? This is the one we have so much luck with. So we're going to give it a shot. Can you install mods on the Xbox? I believe you can. Indeed, you can. It's the PlayStation that never allowed you to install the mods, I think. I just screwed up bad. No, I have not watched any Halloween movies with my wife. We are watching The X-Files. We've been watching The X-Files for almost a week now and really enjoying it. Um, you know, a show that I used to watch in the 90s on and off with my parents. And she said she also used to watch Wow, there was not a single fish there. She said she also used to watch it. Um, so there you go. It's fun. We like it. Good evening, Bill Prophet. Jade says he's taking a break from playing Gotham Knights. He's going to watch me play more tomorrow. But fair enough. Good idea. Um... Keep in mind, you can play as much as you want and get ahead of me. I just hope that I don't get ahead of you. Because that would suck. I wouldn't want to spoil the game if you're playing it and enjoying it for yourself, you know? Really? Derek says he, he, is, he wants to know what X-Files is. You don't know what X-Files is? Really? That's shocking to me because X-Files was so popular back in the day. The X-Files was the first kind of... How can I explain it? Fringe investigation show. And what I mean by that is there were there were cop dramas, there were detective stories and crime stories. Essentially, X-Files is a crime investigation show about the supernatural, including UFOs and aliens, ghosts, mutations, and all kinds of crazy stuff in that vein. Um, it's, it's actually quite interesting because a lot of the times you have no clue what it's going to be, and it looks like the show will be one thing, and then the plot goes completely in another direction. It ends up being something you never expected. Dude, I can't cast tonight for some reason. I'm doing terribly. This is the one fish you typically like, but I can't find any fish where I am right now. Look. There were no fish. Thanks, Derek. I appreciate that. This way? That's true, Derek. He says he was born in the early 2000s. He wouldn't know about the show. The show ran a long time. The show ran like some 9 to 11 seasons or something crazy like that. And then it had a movie too. That's how popular it was at one time. I haven't seen a single fish yet. I right, forget this. I haven't seen any the repeal, fish. And that's it. Because you're just going to waste our time again. No, I don't remember what the lure was that I caught the ginormous striped bass with. Darth Gullbox says it's not a weekday. The fish are all away. They're on the weekend. Uh, typically, we play we play this on Sunday nights. Um, said, actually, the last you know, few weeks, we did not. You, because I had other things like going on on the weekends. But it always seems like this no week in particular, you you're always uh, still having problems. You know, we are actually doing this on the particularly same night I agree with usually do it. So. Tyler, no, I've never seen the Ancient Alien show on Discovery Channel. Oh, my, oh, you guys are right. My camera's in the wrong spot. Let me move it. Oh. Uh, I, I've never watched Ancient Aliens, but I have definitely oh, seen all no, of these. Oh, no, you didn't, you they all over the internet. That guy was shit fucking hair. There we go. Sorry that I blocked that, guys. I forgot. Mark my fucking words. Okay. I'm coming for Oh, Twilight Zone's amazing over Power Boom. My wife and I watched pretty much almost the entire series. You we didn't watch the whole series, but close. You um, are fucked. Problem is, we don't have the streaming Let services those are on anymore. Like on that, you know, previous years, we had other streaming fucked. services. And you you know, this year was the year we cut the, the rope on a million of them. Um, because we were trying to cut back on money, you know. And so we don't have Netflix anymore. We don't have Disney Plus anymore. We don't have... At one point, we even had a trial of Paramount Plus, which was interesting. We liked that. But we got rid of all of them. So all we have now is Hulu uh, and Amazon Prime, and they don't have the show. Kid so. says, I am sad you never finished Oblivion. Yeah, but we're going to... Don't worry, we're going to do Oblivion again soon. I guarantee you we're doing Oblivion again someday. This water's way too shallow. I'm not going to get a fish. Look. It's super shallow water. God, I can't figure out where to, where to fish here. Did I watch a lot of shows with my parents? Mainly stuff that was on, like, Nick at Night and stuff like that. Uh, when I was in, in the 1980s and into the early 90s. And then in the, the, when I got older, I started watching sitcoms like Seinfeld and Friends and Home Improvement. Uh, anything on TGIF. So Perfect Strangers. Um... Step by Step, Full House, all of those. Oh, Family Matters. I watched all of those with my parents when I was growing up. Um, and then we started watching more adult stuff, and X-Files was one of the more adult shows that we watched together. Little Crow, thank you for the super chat. 
I just drove directly into the shore saying thank you to Little Crow. I've absolutely destroyed my, my uh, boat here. Look. <laughs> I destroyed it. I'm having no luck so far tonight. I've not caught a single fish. Let's get Little Crow on the leaderboard here. You chose to broke the law. Live with the consequences. Thank you, Little Crow. First super chat of the night. It is much appreciated. All right, let's try again. Ah, finally a good cast. Oh, all right. It was all about, we had to find the right spot. I think we got a good spot now. I think we're good. Derek says, is my spooky, scary skin of animation, my spooky, scary skeletons animation tiny tonight? No, what happens is it depends on the length of the person's name and what they say. So if the, if the, the name is long or the message is long, then there's a lot of text and the, the picture gets shrunken. But no, I did not change the size of the animation. Okay. Let's try again. First catch of the night. Here we go. What the... Dan says, why is my quality capped at 144p? You would have to ask YouTube about that. Maybe it has something to do with your internet. So you're going to be an general, asshole? But you're going to be treated like I'm an asshole. I'm pretty sure that my quality is not capped at 144p. How about everybody else? Love Love says, what's the big announcement? All right, I made a big video about it earlier today. 15-minute video. Actually, it's a 20-minute video. It's live already. already has over like 1,500 views in climbing. And only a couple of hours. Uh, but then in addition to that, on today's podcast, I went into a big elaboration about it as well if you would like me to briefly cover it i will unless anyone has specific questions they would like to ask about it people are saying they're watching either in 1080 or 720 so it seems like only dan's having the issue with 144p okay All right, a black crappie, at least a decent size. So Derek says, two weeks ago it was 88 fish, last week 109. Did I ask the eight ball if I would beat it? No, I said, would I get a record big one tonight? And it said yes. But I don't know if I should believe it, because as you can see, we're not really seeing too many big fish here. We're seeing a lot of little ones. On my end tonight, I'm seeing no issues. The quality is looking fine. I'm actually seeing a smooth connection. I don't have not money even to do like, it. I like don't a, have money a variation in the quality of the stream. I don't have money to do it. 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 It's definitely a YouTube side issue, and I apologize for that, but I cannot do much. Crispy TV says he's at 1080p, 60 frames. No problems. Okay. Dan says he looked and manually adjusted it to 1080p. Now it seems to work. Sometimes YouTube does that. No, no, no. That isn't a YouTube issue. That happens to me as well. All of a sudden, a video will pop up. It's like really fuzzy. I'm like, what the shit? And I look and it went all the way down to like the lowest quality. Like, why did it do that? I need th that money. I really I don't do. Know why I does need that, that money to pay my bills. Uh, Overpower Boon, there may be a uh, stereotypical fisherman's hat I could buy for the character, but felt like since we already talked a lot tonight, we should just go right into the fishing. Lord Prince Albert wants more volume now. Okay. All right, up the volume for you guys. Lock and load, White little bat. lizard. Yeah, YouTube Mobile. YouTube Mobile is the worst. I, I mean it. The YouTube Mobile app does not work right and never has. And I mean any version. Like, there's versions for TV that those the don't work right. So bad, the one on your phone won't happened. always work right. I always have issues with it whenever I try to use it. Because I have YouTube Premium. When you have YouTube oh. Premium... What happens is you can actually start a playlist in YouTube Mobile. You can minimize the playlist. And you can do something else on your phone and still YouTube listen. So what on. I do sometimes is I minimize while I'm doing other stuff. And I listen to music and stuff. I listen, I listen to like classic video game music and stuff, which is really nice. Uh, you can't do it if you don't have YouTube Premium. If you don't have YouTube Premium and you try to play a playlist, it crashes after the first video. But it's a feature. 
You have to pay YouTube to have the feature, okay? Um, but anyway, no, that app always has issues. Like, seriously, it constantly has issues. <laughs> Jerry's maybe we'll get more funny quotes. Like, last week we got the Chewbacca quote. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Jay says he stopped when Alfred went missing. That's exactly where I stopped. So if you watch my stream tomorrow, you will kind of spoil yourself, Jade. But it's up to you if you want to or not. Um, but that's exactly where I am in the game. And I never even went a step further. What? What happened there? That was weird. Okay. Tartarian chooses. I have YouTube Premium as well, and I love it. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, the fact that you literally never have to see an ad on YouTube at all, no matter what you're watching, a huge plus. Um, and again, the fact that you can you can listen to things and minimize is really good too. So, for, for, for people like us, like Kat and I, have been watching PayPal. series. I told you guys, we just watched a whole playthrough of God of War 2018 to get refreshed for God of War Ragnarok in a couple of weeks. We had no ads. It was just smooth transition between the videos, watching it like an ongoing series. Imagine if there were ads popping up every five minutes. It's like, oh, God. So, I definitely recommend YouTube Premium. Absolutely, I do. Do I have any f favorite rappers? Uh, LL Cool Breeze. My favorite rapper. We have a heartbeat, which means we may have a, a fish I don't have yet. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's not cheap. YouTube Premium is what? Um, $13 a month? Something like that? It's definitely worth it, worth it for me. I got a lot of value out of it this year, for sure. Especially as I started doing my React videos. And you're trying to react to something on YouTube. You don't want ads popping up. So, oh! Oh, wow! That's a giant black crappie. A 3-pound, 12-ounce black crappie. Usually the crappies are very small. This one is ginormous, right? Project Hail Mary feels YouTube should just give YouTube premium to content creators who have a certain amount of subs. Maybe. Maybe that would make sense. Guys, you know what I'm noticing? A lot of you have lost your memberships. I think another membership bomb has expired. What I'd like to do is check and see how we're doing. The most we've ever had was 1,036. And that was actually this morning. But then one member bomb expired, and I think we're about to have another member bomb expire. Let me check. Let me check. <laughs> No, we're still at 937. We're still at 937. We didn't lose any more yet. So that's good. Wiley Coyote, I acknowledge your existence. There you go. Okay. Um. Barrel Shroud, hold that thought. I'm going to answer your question. But I got a $50 tip. So I want to answer that first. <laughs> so that's going to get us to our halfway to our goal here. I received a $50 tip. Um. Sadly, this person did not give me their name. So I, I guess it's anonymous. They said, this is unrelated to your current stream. I want I watch your Zelda Brother of the Wild playthrough. It made me have a good laugh, and I've enjoyed it. Here's some appreciation. And remember, Mifa's grace is ready. So here's someone who's just watching the videos on demand, isn't even watching the stream, and just so happens to drop a, a big contribution. Thank you so much to the anonymous $50 tipper. I really appreciate that. So, number one, with that tip, for $55 in tips, that means it's going to glass this time. Barrel Shroud, don't be, don't, please don't be angry with me. I know you asked the question first, but I was like, let's get this stuff done first. I swear to you, I will answer your question, okay? Because I need to give background so people know I don't what have money about. to do it. I don't have money okay. to do it. I don't have money to do it. Right. I don't have money to do it. 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 Go to glasses. Let's get an animation going. A fun Halloween animation. We only have about... Oh, man, only a little over a week left for the Halloween animations, guys. Man, have I liked these animations, right? Have you guys liked these? All these cool Halloween-themed animations? I've loved them. Oh, uh, they're going to go away for November, but then we're going to have Christmas-themed ones for December. Oh, no. Very nice. All right, now we're more than halfway to our goal to add a new lure. All right? All right, now, so what I need to do for you guys is I need to give you a little bit of background of what, I, what, what everyone's going to be talking about tonight because Barrel Shroud asked a specific question in regards to that. So let's, let's give background. Earlier today, I made a big announcement, an announcement that I've never made any announcement like this ever before, all right? Basically, in a nutshell, I'm really tired of everyone on the internet 
slandering me and defaming me with the same memes and shit that they say all the time. And basically completely ignoring the fact that I have already talked about these publicly encountered many of them. Um, people just like to pre pretend like things I say on my channel don't exist. All right. And it's one thing if these were me like negative memes like this is how you don't play or even talking about things that factually happened. Like, to be honest, my embarrassing moment from 2016. That's not what I'm talking about. Those moments are fine. I've moved past those moments and I'm still good. You know, the problem is people are now really starting to make up and emphasize shit about co complete nonsense that is not real, mostly based on little nuggets of truth, but never really the full truth. And I'm tired of it. And the reason this really has come to a head is in the last few months, I've noticed not even just like little time haters or detractors, big time fucking YouTube channels has started to put me into fucking countdowns and shit. And they're regurgitating the same negative toxic memes about me that are not true. They're just not. Again, maybe they're based on a nugget of truth, but they are not true. But they're actually representing them as if they're facts. Saying, oh yeah, Phil is one of the YouTubers you don't want to deal with because he has, he scams his viewers and he, you know, he had a bankruptcy with this and he has WWE champions that and he has this and that. And they just keep saying the same shit. I mean, for us here on the channel, this is the same shit that we've heard for years and years. So for us, we're like desensitized to it, right? Like we don't care. But other people on a regular basis now just hear about this. And they think it's real. They believe it because the other channels, these YouTube channels that are talking about me are saying it's real. But there's no corroboration, or excuse me, there's no, no fact checking. There can't be fact checking because it's not factual. There's no way that what they're saying can be true because it can't be because it's not. You know what I'm saying? So all they're doing is they're regurgitating the same negative memes about me that have no factual basis and it's bullshit. It's not fair that now I have people all over the internet who... It's one thing, again, to say, you know, I don't like Phil because this is how you don't play. He was a bad gamer. He said stupid shit back in the day. Yes. Or because he's an embarrassing moment. There's another thing to not like me because of shit that people actually fucking made up. You know what I mean? And I don't have a lawyer to sue everyone who says this. So the announcement that I made earlier today is I want to be interviewed by someone out there who's going to be fair, who's going to ask me the tough questions, but allow me to answer my own way so that you know exactly from my perspective what's going on. And it's on anyone else to, to make their own judgment if they want to believe me or not. But at least if I basically get interviewed and respond to all this tiger, nonsense tiger, publicly roll, somewhere roll, else roll, other than tiger, DSP Gaming, roll, roll. okay, it's going to give me the opportunity to finally be heard. The problem is when I respond to all that shit here, the only people that hear me are my own audience and my haters. My own audience already believes me and trusts me, and my haters never will, and all they do is say that it's bunk without ever actually, you know, doing anything about it. They just regurgitate their same memes in a circle. So it's eventually worthless for me to defend myself on my own content anymore. What I need to do is I need to go outside of my stream, and I need to maybe go on someone else's show, or, you know what I mean? And people are suggesting all these YouTubers, and I have absolutely no idea, um, you know, who's going to be interested or, or what if, if anything will ever end up you know, with this. Now, it's funny because some people are saying, go on the Joe Rogan show. Go on, like, what are you, out of your mind? They don't cover, they don't care about me. I'm, I'm tiny. I'm a small potatoes nobody. I'll never be on a show like that. But other YouTubers, right? Maybe they would want to have me on their shows. People were making all kinds of suggestions earlier today, like Asmongold or Keemstar or Review Tech USA or, um, who is that? The one that people kept saying over and over. Oh, Nick, Nick Rakita, the internet lawyer, uh, stuff like that. So, oh, Channel 5 News, which I don't even know what that is, but Channel 5 News people were saying, those are the ones that everyone was saying earlier today, I should go on. Now, here's the thing. I made the video, I threw it out there on the internet. I'm going to make it my featured video tonight, so it's featured on my channel and everyone will see it for several days. I'm sure word's going to spread about this. Already word is spread on social media, and already a couple people have chimed in on this. Okay? Now, I, I want to say this up front. I'm not doing this for money. I don't know if anyone will even offer me money, nor do I really care. That's not the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it to try to have an opportunity to finally speak publicly and have people hear what I have to say rather than only hear the one side of it and then act like it's true, okay, without hearing any kind of a rebuttal whatsoever, okay? So that's what I'm doing it for. If I get offered anything for it, I mean, okay, but that's not what I'm looking for, okay? I'm serious. Like, for right now, if someone came out and said, I offer you a ton of money, and someone else who I think would be a more reputable person to do the interview with offered for free, I'd go with the free, 
just to, to make sure that it's, it's going to be a good interview. You see what I'm saying? So, basically right now, um, what's happened today? I'll tell you what's happened. So first of all, I announced in the video, there's two ways to contact me. You need to DM me on Twitter, if you can, because some people can't, or you got to email me at darksidefillahotmail.com. Here's what's happened. I have already had over a dozen people who want to interview me, who sadly, I hate to admit it, just don't have any views or clout. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying the whole purpose of me going public with an interview is so that someone who has a public face can now have my responses be seen. What is the point of going on someone's show who is smaller than me? Do you see? The whole point is to get my my responses and my rebuttal to it's everything that you shit about me get amplified on the internet. That's not going to happen if I interview someone who has, you know, a thousand subscribers. So I'm not crapping on anyone who's small time. I'm saying there's no point in doing it. Like, that would be counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. Um, but I don't want anyone to feel like I'm trying to hate on them or dump on them at all. That's not the case at all. The point was exposure for my answers, you see? Um, so, already I can tell you, like I said, like over a dozen people who are just small-time guys, I'm like, well, sorry, you know, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna work. And I'm not, the thing is, I'm not gonna be able to even respond to all of them. I'm getting so many now. Over the course of today, like I said, I already got a dozen before. I probably have more now. Um, I'm probably just going to have to ignore a lot of them, okay? Now, I did get a few offers from people who... Oh, well, let me think, because first we're talking about the people who emailed me. So let's just talk about the people who emailed me, okay? Out of the people who emailed me, I got it's I got offers from a, a few small-time people, all right? I got offers from, get this, like you're going to be shocked about this one, some of my fucking detractors. Some of the people who actually make hate videos about me on a daily basis, the people, the very people who created the slander, all right? The very people who did it and are the ones who are rotating this around and making me look bad on a daily basis, they want now to be the ones to interview me. Uh, okay, I got, I got, hold on, hold on. Hmm. Does that sound like a good idea? Do I think that I would get anything positive over being interviewed by one of my own detractors, essentially stepping into the line of fire, into the lion's den, basically lining myself up in pain and misery for people who, no matter what I do, they won't believe me anyway, right? What a dumb fucking thing. You know, probably the kicker was a guy whose name, I'm not kidding you, his fucking name was Adolf Pigler. Adolf Pigler says he wants to interview me. How about no? The Ziggy Piggy is here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gotta, re gotta refocus myself. Okay? So, no, I'm not going to speak with detractors. That would be completely the opposite of what I'm trying to do. The detractors are the one who created these rumors. The detractors are the one who passed them on as fact. And the detractors are the reason why I have a living misery life half the time anyway with the crimes and shit that they, they actually, sadly, get people to commit against me. No, I'm not interviewing, being interviewed by a detractor. That's the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard. And to any detractor who emailed me, you're a fucking buffoon. Officially, you're stupid. You little fish. You can clip that. They are stupid. Adolf Pigler, you are very stupid. Okay, um, all right, so that's not going to happen. Now, I did receive an email directly from Review Tech USA. He did email me, okay? I'm not going to tell you specifics, but essentially he did make a fair offer. However, as you guys know, sadly this year with Rich did not go so well. Our relationship did not really go so well. As you know, um, he is not really a trustworthy guy. He says one thing, he does another, or he literally seems like he's on your side just so he can stab you in the back later. I, I mean, take a look at um, the situation we had, okay? So I was supposed to, I was kind of being really friendly with the guy over the course of the year. And behind the scenes, we have a conversation. He said to me at one point, why don't you monetize your O face from 2016? He says, why don't you have shirts with your face on it? Why don't you have, um, you know, icons on your stream with it? Why don't you do all that and make a big bank on it and everything, okay? To which I responded to him, 
basically the the best and fa most fair way I think I possibly could. I said, Rich, let me explain. Let me be transparent with you. That was six years ago. That was my past. It was embarrassing. It was a different me. I've changed who I was since then. I was actually in a deep depression in 2016 because my life was falling apart behind the scenes personally. Um, I don't like thinking back to that embarrassing moment because it's hurtful, not only to me, but to my family. My wife hates it when I bring that up and we talk about it because it, she's like, that's not you anymore. I know that's not you anymore. That's not the guy I married. You know, that's someone completely different. And you're not that person anymore. You shouldn't have to dwell on your past and be reminded of it every 10 seconds. And she actually gets very upset whenever there's a, you know, someone brings it up or does a dumb meme about it. She does. She legitimately gets very upset. So I said to Rich, privately, I have this conversation with him. I'm like, so why would I want to make that a mainstream part of who I am in my content when I know not only is it not who I am anymore, but it hurts my wife? And you know how he responded? Eh, you should still do it anyway. I would do it. And then what did he proceed to do? I asked him. I said, could you stop using that face in your content? Because I find it personally painful when you do that. And he continues to do it to this day and doesn't care. He just thinks it's funny. So the thing is, maybe at one point, um, maybe at one point, I would have said, yeah, that makes sense. I'll go on Review Tech Show. All right. And by the way, like I said, he, did, he has maybe an offer that I feel is kind of fair. I don't want to publicly disclose what it is yet. He very well might uh, publicly disclose you know, the term right, that he so gave me is actually awesome. quite favorable, I feel. Uh, no, it's not money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying like he, the way that he